Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this video we're going to create a Hello World JavaScript program. So um, we haven't really quite finished installing things here so I'm going, to I'm going to assume that by now you have got some terminal installed that you're happy with using. I'm going to assume you're using Bash um, but if you, you can use you know Windows Terminal or whatever um, you just need to make sure you're okay with using it and you understand it um, and you should have got git installed ideally and you should have um, you, you'll definitely need node and npm you'll need all that and you'll need a programmer's text editor and I, I will assume that you've got Visual Studio Code installed by now or else another text editor that you're familiar with and you know how to use okay so one thing is, um, Visual Studio Code out of the box uh, doesn't necessarily support JavaScript programming well. What we need is two things. We need a syntax highlighter, which will color different parts of the code that we're going to write in meaningful ways to help us understand it. And we need a kind of a prettifier or formatter that will automatically format or arrange the code in a way that makes sense. So what I'd recommend is when you start Visual Studio Code for the first time, usually you'll get this welcome screen and um, it says customize here, install support for JavaScript. You probably want to click that and just do it. If you don't see that in Visual Studio Code, you can also just search on the internet for something like Visual Studio Code uh, JavaScript plugins, something like that because you need to install plugins that will enable you to work well with JavaScript. Go to maybe this page at code.visualstudio.com, install, you know, whichever of these seem like they might be useful, like Prettier, I think will be uh, definitely a good one to install. Um, you'll, you'll figure out pretty quickly if you've got the right support that you need in Visual Studio Code or not. And you can also, if you look at Visual Studio Code, on the at the moment on the left, at least in this version I'm using in 2020, there's like this icon. It looks like a sort of some building bricks, and if you click that, it opens an extensions panel uh, where if you've got an internet connection, um, which you have because you're watching this video, unless you've downloaded it and you're watching it later, then you um, can search for extensions here. Like you could search for JavaScript and install them here. So I've installed some extensions, uh, basically, um, but the bottom line is you've got to have a formatter and a syntax highlighter. Let's take a look. All right, so I'm going to get rid of this now, um, and I'm going to open the Explorer, File Explorer, with this thing here in the top, in the top left, this icon. Uh, and if I click that, it I can open a folder. So I'm going to open that folder we created in the last video. Um, you can either just create that manually or even better, uh, create it by cloning your remote Git repository like I did in the last video. So I'm going to click open folder, navigate to that video and just select it, click open. And then it, it shows me what's, uh, what's in that video. Actually I've opened the wrong one here. I don't think I wanted to open that. Let's go to file and close folder and then I'm going to make sure I open the right one click open folder and what I want is this folder that I just created in the last video using git using git clone so I click open and there we go this is the folder so it's got a dot git ignore in it and a license file and a readme.md which is just a text file uh, now I'm going to create a new file in there you can either do that by going to File, New File, like any reasonable text editor. Well, ah, that's a bit of an exaggeration because Vim, for example, is a reasonable text editor but doesn't work like this. But anyway, like most text editors that have a, a GUI graphical user interface, you can go to File, New File. Or um, if you look in this File Explorer, uh, above the fold, if you hover over the folder name, there's a new file icon. There's also a new folder icon. Let's click the new file icon and give it a name. And I'm going to create a file called hello world.js. 
You can call it what you want, but I would recommend giving it a JS extension. And because I've installed various plugins, the fact that I give it a .js extension means Visual Studio Code will recognize that this is supposed to be a JavaScript file, and that's why it suddenly popped up that yellow JS there. It may or may not do that on yours. Depends what extensions you've installed. Okay, now let's type a program. So I'm going to type... Uh, so I'm going to show you what to type here. I'm not going to explain it that much. You're going to come to it to understand it more as you go through the course. If you've already got programming experience, it, this won't be a mystery to you. If you're a complete beginner, it will be more of a mystery, but that's all right. Um, the important thing at the moment is to actually type this yourself. So you, you can't learn programming just by watching videos. That's like trying to learn to play the piano by watching videos about people playing the piano. You have to actually watch the video and try the thing yourself, whether you try it now or afterwards. You've got to do it yourself if you really want to learn this. I don't know whether I'm going to give you suggestions for exercises. I probably will as we go along. But the really important thing is you try out what you see me doing and also experiment with it a little bit yourself. So I'm going to type here console.log and then two round brackets and then a semicolon like that. You've got to get it exactly correct. It will actually work without the semicolon in JavaScript, but I usually try to put it in. I feel it's good practice. And then I'm going to put the cursor inside these two round brackets and type a, uh, a quote like this, a quote mark. And because I've got various plugins installed, um, Visual Studio Code put the closing quote in for me. So I've got a pair of single quotes there. It's not a speech mark, it's two single quotes. Um, notice also that console is a different color to log, if you can see that. I've got syntax highlighting going on here. Again, that's because I installed syntax highlighting extensions like Prettier, for example. You want that working, ideally. It makes programming much easier. So I'm going to click within, the, just within, between these two single quotes and type hello space world exclamation mark and save that file. All right, so this is a really simple, basic JavaScript standalone program. And now I'm going to, I'm going to run that. And to do that, uh, you probably can run it from within Visual Studio Code. Uh, there's also, by the way, you can also open a terminal within Visual Studio Code. Um, but I'm just going to run it from my freestanding terminal program. So I'm going to assume that you have a terminal uh, that you're happy with and you know how to use or else you're using bash and you can just follow along with me here. Let's go to the terminal. Um, so I'm going to type PWD uh, in bash to see where I am and I'm not in the right place here. Um, so I'm going to do CD space dot dot to go up a level. CD space dot 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 to go up another level and I'm going to do PWD and then let's do LS to see what's in here. Okay, I'm going to CD space into my Node.js folder. Um, this is going to be different for you. You know, it just depends what folders you've got. I just wanted to show you a bit of how you navigate in Bash. I'll use the um, tab key to autocomplete, uh, which will probably work for you as well. It depends what operating system you're using, maybe. I'm not sure. And then hit return, uh, LS, and I'm going to do CD space. Uh, basically, I'm going to change into that directory that we created in the last video. I hit return and ls to see what's in it and okay there's my hello world.js. ls is short for list by the way, cd is short for change directory, pwd I can't remember what that what that's short for but it shows you where you are if you're using a bash terminal. Now to run this I just type node space hello world.js and hit return again I was using the tab key to autocomplete the file name there. Hit return and it says hello world. Okay, so um, what have we done here? Well, node is a interpreter. That is, it can take a file containing instructions in the JavaScript language and it can carry out those instructions. And the instructions that I wrote here basically say, uh, we, we call it printing. So print the text hello world. In other words, display that on the console. And that's the result. So my node program has run the instructions in my hello world.js file. 
written in the JavaScript language and it's done what I told it to do. It's printed Hello World. Printing here has nothing to do with printers. It's programming lingo for display on the console. So um, if you've got some programming experience, uh, you may be underwhelmed by this. You know, it's the first step. It's great. You have to do it. Um, you may be surprised that you can do this with JavaScript. I certainly was uh, to find that you can run JavaScript as a freestanding program these days using Node. This was a surprise to me when I first did this. Uh, if you're a complete beginner, this may feel all very confusing and um, you won't know, you know, why, why console, why log, why any of this. Um, that's okay. Your confusion will go away as you carry on going through the course. The important thing is um, to, to follow along with what I'm doing, either after the video or during it. Type out this stuff, get it working yourself. That's absolutely vital. And also experiment with it a bit. So in this case, you could probably guess that you can change the text, hello world, inside these single quotes to something else, and it should still work generally. Uh, so try that out for yourself. And I'm going to assume um, that you are typing this stuff for yourself and experimenting with it a little bit. Otherwise, you just won't learn what's in this course unless unless you're an experienced programmer, maybe. And then you could probably just watch the videos and apply them just from memory. I don't know, maybe. Uh, but anyway, okay, so we'll leave it there for this. Ah, no, we won't. I've got another thing to do. Before we leave this video, let's check our code into Git. So in the, in the last video, I created a GitHub, re GitHub repository. And this directory that we're in is a local version of that. So it, now if I type git status, hang on, let's just do clear first. So I just type clear to clear the console. Git space status. If you've got git installed, um, you'll see uh, a message like this. So it, this is actually showing in red. It may or may not do for you, but it will probably say untrack files, hello world. So what I want to do is I want to, um, we say stage the changes for commit. It's git lingo. This isn't really a tutorial on git, but I need to tell git about this file. I need to tell it, look, store this file. So I'm going to say git add, and I'll just use git add star to say, look, add everything to the git repository here. And after that, or I could just do git add hello world JS. Doesn't matter which one really. If I then do git status, now it says changes to be committed. And it tells me what command I would use if I wanted to undo what I just did. And it says new file, hello world, JS. Now I can write git commit uh, and then hyphen M to add a message. And I'm, so I'm committing to git, meaning now I'm actually saving my changes in my local git repository. So git add says, look, take notice of these files. They're important, basically. And um, we say that we're staging changes for commit. Commit actually saves those changes in effect, the changes that we made to this file. Uh, we created it and added text to it. We want to save all that. And it's the commit that's actually saving it, basically. So I'll, I'll do git commit hyphen M, and then I'll just put a message created in double quotes and hit return. Okay, and now um, if, if I do git status, it, it says, let's just do clear and git space status. It says, uh, on branch master, your branch is ahead of origin master by one commit. Use git push to publish your local commits. So I've committed to my local git repository. I've saved the changes that I've just done, but I want to, I want to send them to the remote repository on github.com uh, because, you know, if my computer gets messed up, I don't want to lose my changes. So I'm going to save the local changes in the remote repository. To do that, I write git push origin master. So four different words there. So I'm using git. I'm doing a push command. I'm pushing to the origin, in other words, to the uh, remote repository. And this is a, a what we call a branch name. It's a particular version of this code, basically. We won't dwell on that too much, but I'm going to hit return. Uh, you might need to add a username and password at this point. Um, it's not asking me to do that because I've already run Git, but it will probably ask you to add your GitHub 
uh, username, which is probably an email address, and your github.com password as well. And it may also ask you to configure your um, your email address, and it will tell you how to do that, uh, probably, if it asks you to do that. So you probably won't have too much trouble with this. Um, it's not too confusing. So there's three commands that we did there. Uh, we did, let's do maybe, um, hist- uh, yeah, let's do history git. You don't have to follow, you don't have to do this. But I'm, I want to look at the history of things that I've done and filter that. Uh, so Gret filters it. So I want to run this through Gret and just see the ones that contain the word git. And we can see that what I did was basically I did git add star, um, git commit hyphen m with a message, and git push push origin master. Those are the three commands that I used to save what I've done. Git status was just used to see what's going on basically. And you might need to do other stuff. Um, uh, you might need to do other stuff like uh, just add your password the first time you do this. Okay, um, when you've done that, you should be able to go to github.com and, well, if you log in, uh, you should be able to see your repository there and you find that your source code has been added to it. Um, and there it is for me. If if you so you may or may not decide to use GitHub, it's not an essential part of this course. Um, but whether you do or not, uh, if you want to see my source code, the stuff that I'm creating, you can go to GitHub.com/slash Cave of Programming, and then uh, you want to go to my Node.js repository. So either just go to slash Node.js directly, or click on my repositories tab and go to Node.js. So basically go to the URL github.com slash cave of programming, all one word, slash Node.js. And then you can see my source code in there and here's hello world JS. So after this tutorial, I'll probably start giving these kind of numbers so we can, you can basically, you know, kind of keep track of them a bit better. All right. Um, so that's it for this video. Hopefully you ran your first Hello World program. If you're a complete beginner with programming and you managed to run this, that's an incredible achievement. Believe me, be proud of it. Okay, so until next time, happy coding.